So everyone, today I am going to take a tour uh, of our lab, Smart Lab. It is in the Department of Physics, and it is in Chennai. So I welcome everyone. So this is our lab. Welcome to our lab. And the main research areas that we are focusing on is solar energy materials, solar photo photovoltaics, solar photo catalysts, and uh, solar energy harvesting and utilization. So as you can see, our lab is divided into different segments. So this is the material synthesis area where we carry out our uh, material synthesis. It consists of two few modes in which we carry out the reactions so as to prevent gases escaping outside. And this is the chemical bench where we keep uh, the important chemicals and also we do the synthesis. So also the two basics. Now uh, this is the furnace room where we have a option for dry uh, drying and also a muffle furnace for doing calcination. So once the material is synthesized, we have our material uh, testing center uh, where we have a provision for testing for both photovoltaics and photocatalysts. So this is where we the scholar sit and this is a maximum this is a scholar scholar and we have a maximum capacity of seven. And this is the discussion room where we held our discussion and make decision. So now let us hear from our group leader, Dr. Renji Jinnayar, who is the assistant professor of physics at NIT Simpson. Thank you, Nikhil. On behalf of Solar Energy Materials Research and Testing Laboratory, I welcome you all to this lab tour. This lab is developed with an aim to promote research on green energy technologies, particularly engineering of nanomaterials for solar energy applications. This lab has expertise on synthesis, characterization and optimization of various semiconductor metal oxide nanomaterials for solar photocatalytic and photovoltaic applications. This group is also working on developing innovative low-cost low laboratory instruments for research purpose. We have a wide range of inter- and intra-institutional collaborations for interdisciplinary research on solar energy materials and its applications. I also take this opportunity to thank the institute, various funding agencies, collaborators, alumni, and my dear students to make this lab in its current form. We are open for any type of academic collaborations, UGPG internships, and do feel free to contact us for any research opportunities in the above mentioned field. Now, Nigil will take you to the lab tour. Hi Janana, can you explain what you are doing? Okay, uh, here we are in normally we do the synthesis plant. We use, uh, we normally prepare metal oxide semiconductor for that we use by various types of uh, uh, synthesis methods. So here we basically use hydrothermal, uh, which I am already preparing hydrothermal, some hydrothermal uh, solution. Then also we can prepare via solution. Then again, microwave co precipitation. These are some uh, facilities uh, we are having. So, for hydrothermal preparation, actually, we use a Teflon steel autoclave. For that, <coughs> this is Teflon steel of 150 ml and this is 100 ml. So, this is the autoclave. Uh, by, uh, by using this uh, part, so we normally test hydrothermal part. And then this, uh, we have other sim uh, sample preparation methods, like uh, other methods, and that will, after that, that we can uh, get the metal oxide sample. Thank you, Sunaina, for the beautiful explanation. So I can see uh, Pujita is ready <laughs> with the further part of the synthesis, so let us go to Pujita. Hello, Pujita. Hello, Nikhil. So can you explain what you are doing? So what I have done is I have already synthesized my material mm -hmm. using a uh, uh, high method. So the next step is the processing of our samples. So first what we do is we use a centrifuge machine to uh, we centrifuge our, our samples else and we get our samples as a precipitate. So from there we can extract our samples from our solvents. So another by-product from the centrifuge is our supernatant uh, solvents. 
So uh, over here, at we can separate our solvents and, and we can recover all the solvents that we have used for our washing and synthesis is using this this machine, which is a rotary evaporator, uh, where our uh, solvents can be separated uh, with different boiling points at by boiling and heating the solvents at a low pressure. So after all of this is done, we're going to go over to the furnace room and we are going to dry our samples. Here is our furnace room, and here we have a hot air oven. So, in this hot air oven, I am going to put in my washed samples, uh, and then we can set the hot air oven at the temperature we required and we can dry it. So, after drying here in the hot air oven, we can get our powder, the samples in a powder form, and we can calcine it in this bubble furnace. So, bubble furnace here we put them in. Uh, crucibles like this, this and then we can set the temperature at we want at what we want, the temperature what we want and there the calcination is complete. So our simple synthesis, sample synthesis and processing is complete. So after that there will be this characterization and testing. Now we have to do the further characterization and also the testing. So as a part of our depart, institutional department facility, we have XRD and UV DR spectrophotometer in our in our institute. For further characteristics such as FSM and HRM, we have to send the sample from set. And regarding the material testing part, uh, for the basic photocatalytic and photovoltaic testing, we have the setup in our lab. So now we will go and see. So I can see Xiaomi ready uh, with the explanation for the photovoltaic part. Hello, Swami. So you can explain the photovoltaic energy. So we are testing uh, IV characteristic of a cell, uh, of a disensitized solar cell, which is prepared in our lab. So first, we will uh, measure the light intensity, so which is a thousand watt per meter square in our case, which is a one sun condition. After testing the, uh, after fixing the light source, then we'll test uh, the uh, IV characteristic using a source meter, which is provided by. Italy. So first we will do a voltage sweep, the using a voltage sweep we can get the range of the short circuit current, the highest limit of the current and then using a, a current bias we can get the VOC of the cell. Then we will perform a voltage sweep using the conditions which we got. Then we can get a IV. So we can see here we got the IV of the prepared cell. So this is how we test our cell in the smart lab. Thank you. Thank you, Samuel, for the wonderful explanation. Now we move over to Suma, who is ready with the photo contact, photo setup. Hello, Suma. So, can you explain the photo testing in So, whatever material we synthesize, we test their photocatalytic performance. For that purpose, in our lab, we have indigenously developed two reactors. One is the slurry mode batch reactor, as you can see. Here we have different light sources with different wavelengths, certain wavelengths. So along with this, we have a, another reactor that is basically our, this one, the continuous fixed mode reactor. So after doing the photocatalytic performance, we need to separate the catalyst. For that purpose, we centrifuge the sample. And after that, we need to check the degradation performance that we did with this UVB spectrometer, that is the Azlent Make. And this is how we check the degradation performance. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you so much for the wonderful explanation. So this completes our material testing part. So this is Gopika, who is a final year MSc student who is doing project in our lab. So let us hear her experience. Hi Gopika. So can you share some experience in our lab? Of course. Uh, I'm doing my MSc project in my lab. Uh, my topic is not titania for the, uh, for the catalysis. Uh, and now currently I am doing my synthesis part and I am also getting very good results while checking the activity. That's all about my work. Thank you. Thank you Gopika. So this completes our virtual lab too. So you have seen 
what are the facilities we are having and what are the, what are the works that we are doing so you are all welcome to further collaboration and working in the world thank you